recorded in sinfully sunny Las Vegas, Nevada, Avon Pop Bookstore presents Interviews. Joining us on this episode of Avon Pop Bookstore Presents is Elise Krenzel. Elise is a writer and will be discussing her book, Under My Skin. At age 19, the youngest journalist on the KISS Japan tour, she negotiated a plump job with one of the biggest players in the Japanese musical industries. Spanning three continents and 20 years, Under My Skin tells the story of a street-smart, vulnerable Jewish girl from the Bronx and how she changed her life forever. Please help me welcome Elise Crinsell. Yes. We are going to be discussing, and you're going to be coming in to do a signing for Under My Skin. I'm really yes. excited to hear about your journey throughout this, because this is a really exciting book. Thank you so very much. So you, you, you graduate high school, and you decide to go to Europe, and then what what kind of shifted there into getting to, getting to go along with KISS to Japan? Okay, so just a little... You know, a little foreplay for yeah. the uh, <laughs> for the listeners <laughs> and for those who can make it to the store on the 24th. So essentially what happened was that I was offered a sweet 16 present. Um, it was either to go to Europe or go to have a party. I'm like, I don't even have friends in <laughs> high school. So not going to any party. I'm not making a party. I'm definitely not wearing a little tutu or a debutante dress. I was a glam kid. Right. So I went to Europe. And, okay, so what happened a little bit before that summer was the the coalescence of uh, two innate talents of mine, which was writing and music. I had played music. I was in a household of music. Um. My father was in the music business, a uh, periphery. He was the first salesman on the East Coast for Panasonic Stereo. Wow. So we got swag. Like we had the TV in the stereo system. He had the TIAC machines. He had, you know, all the tape decks. He had 78s, 45s, uh, LPs. He collected jazz. And he took me to concerts. That was amazing. I wasn't even... I was a prepubescent. I wasn't even a teen. I saw the Iron Butterfly. I saw, I went to Electric Lady Studios. I saw Herman's Hermits. I saw the Beatles. I went to Woodstock. That's great. So all of that was sort of in my blood. And then I had this aha moment. And it was, oh, I'm going to be a rock and roll journalist. Just like that, like I, you, like, you were some, you were merged in it. Why not? Yeah. So it just was. Oh, okay. That's what I'm going to do. And while I was in Europe, I had the great good fortune, coincidence, kismet, call it whatever you want. I met Barry a Hay of Golden Earring. Wow. The lead singer. Yeah. That was the hit song "Radar Love." Yeah. Which, Great song, still today. Yes. Yeah. It's it's, a, it's it's definitely a classic that, you know, when bands redo it, it still sounds like it's just as strong as you know heavy metal rock and roll right there. Yeah, exactly. So I met him while I was in Holland, and while I was in France, another thing that happened, which was just, I don't know, this was these were signposts along the way that said, "Okay, kiddo, you're on the right track." So I'm in Paris and I met the punk rocker, Plastic Bertrand, who had this huge hit, which was also international, called Sa Plan Pour Moi. It went, oh, Sa yes. Plan Pour Moi. Yes, 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 yes. I know the song well. <laughs> <laughs> and I met him and it, it was impromptu and I did an interview and um, like I didn't really know what I was doing, but I had, I had guts. I had what is called chutzpah. Yeah. yeah. 
you know, and they, these interviews weren't published anywhere except my school newspaper. <laughs> oh, that's classic. <laughs> uh, uh, but I was convinced, like, this is the this is the road to go on. All right. Now, now, now that you, did you come, you come back home and uh, you, you with your connections hook up with Kiss? OK, so I come back home. I had one more year of high school. And I had a wonderful mentor who basically taught me how to write a pitch letter. Because this was back in the day where you had to submit articles that you wrote on a typewriter right. and sent it in the post in an envelope with a stamp. <laughs> and so I wrote pitch letters galore. And the way I did it was I, I had my own 2000 plus album collection and I was a walking Wikipedia of who is in what band, where, where did they go? You know, what are they doing? What instruments do they play? What are their songs, the hit songs? And so what I did was every new LP that I purchased, I would write a full record review. Nice. Then I would go to concerts. So that was my big thing. I was at concerts every weekend. And I kept at it and a year and a half later circus magazine decided to publish something of mine wow how old were you at that point about 17 and a half wow that's exciting that's so circus magazine published me i graduated high school a year early at 18 i had my own apartment in new york city I was I was hustling. I was working yeah. for a wine magazine named Vintage, which not interesting to me, but it was an official magazine, right? I'm in the yeah. publishing industry and I'm writing and I'm freelancing and I'm doing whatever I can writing for all these community type of newspapers in the city. And what I did was strategize, okay, look, I'm nobody. How am I going to up level this? How can I gain exposure for what I'm doing? Not because I wanted to be famous so much as I wanted to get the good interviews yeah. with the better bands. And so what I did was I looked into becoming the New York correspondent for Canadian and British consumer and trade magazines. Okay. And that's what I did because nobody wanted that. Nobody thought of that. Yeah. So I had then two mastheads for Performance Magazine, which was for the talent and booking part of the business, and for Record Week, which was based out of Calgary. Wow. That's okay. That's, so that's now, amazing. so now I have access. Now I'm going to parties. Now I'm interviewing Hall and Oates. Now I'm interviewing Peter Gabriel. You know, now things are rocking and rolling. And then um, I'm going on, keep on, on, on and on. And then it's, I think, January or so of 1977. I'm 19. I get a call from the press office, which was then the publicity office for KISS. Al Ross, who was the general manager, said, I want to invite you on tour to Japan on a press junket with nine other journalists. Do you want to go? And I said, no. I was a snooty 19-year-old. I'm like, I don't like the band. I'm not going. Thank you. And he's like, no, 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 you're going. They're the best thing in the, in the world. They're the greatest. You're going to love them. There is no way you won't like their pyrotechnics, their stage show, their everything. I said, I don't need to go. I've seen the band in Queens. I don't like them. Not my style. And if I can't write what I want, no, thank you. Hung up the phone. Bye. In between, in three weeks, a couple of things happen. Again, kismet, call it meant to be. I'm walking down Broadway and I'm looking at an awning and it says Pacific Overtures. Curious, what's that? 
oh, it's a play all about Japan. Like Japan's rise to to conquer America with Sony, with Panasonic, with all the electronics, with the cars, with the transistor radios, with everything that Japan was then becoming known for. I, I bought myself a ticket to that play. And then a week after that, I had an interview set up over dinner with Paul Simon. At that interview, where was it? Out of one of four Japanese restaurants in New York City, because he loved sushi. I'm like, okay, no, 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 this is too much. The play, the kiss, Paul Simon, now I'm learning how to use chopsticks. Okay, I'm going to give it a shot. So the, he, Al Ross calls me back and says, are you coming on the tour? And I said, yes, <clears throat> if I can write what I want. He goes, I'm not even worried about it. You're going to you're going to love it. <laughs> Bravado. Yeah. And, and, and that's it. And I went and I went and I and I did love it. I did. Yeah. I became a fan. I mean, I I'm supposed to be impartial, right, as a journalist. And. I'll say it to this very day. I was not impartial. I became a fan. I loved it. Now, was it because of the band you were hanging out with or just the <laughs> overall aesthetics of it all? The aesthetics, I think what really got me was the fact that, first of all, I'm in a foreign country. So that in and of itself, you know, you're in Japan for the first time. That's extraordinary. It's exquisite. It's beyond words. It's it's so overwhelming. And then there's 20,000 KISS fans, these screaming girls, all in makeup, especially the number one member was Peter Chris because of cats. Yeah. They love, you know, Kabuki. And then Monaco, the cat that goes like this. It was it was a frenzy. And my article was entitled Bigger Than the Beatles. Wow. And they were bigger than the Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, that's great. Now, how many articles did you get to write for them uh, when you were over there, when they're, when you were with them? Three. Three. Nice. Two were, two were published in Japan and one was for record week, which was the exclusive. Now, when you were there, how, what, how did you end up staying and getting into the, the radio? Uh, I mean, that's just like, they talk about stepping in the right room at the right time. The universe was just handing you freebies, it sounded like. <laughs> well, okay, so that's not in book one, because uh, I have three. It's, it's a trilogy. Right. Um, and my second one is almost finished. Anyway, but I'll just give a little, um, yeah, a little a bit teaser. of- a teaser. A teaser. So after the tour, um, okay, so one of the journalists on the tour was a, a buddy of mine, and um, he was staying because he had a girlfriend there, and they were going to go on to China or wherever they were going, Hong Kong, Taiwan, I don't know. He said, why don't you stay, you know, I'll, uh, I'll introduce you to some people, I'll get, get, you to pl get you a place, see what it's like. I'm not, and I was super curious. So I told Al, I said, look, I'm going to stay. I'm not going back with the band. He's like, he almost panicked. And well, you, you, you have to, you have to go. I said, no, I don't have to go. It's an open ticket. Well, will you write the article? You, you promised you're writing the article. I said, of course I'm writing the article. It was already sent by Telex. Do you know how long that took? <laughs> it's like a seven page article letter by letter on a telex machine those and it took hours to send that article anyway sent it it was published uh, a month and a half later and while i was over there in, in during the two weeks i went to the magazine editor-in-chief of music life which was the number one rock magazine in japan at the time music life was owned by the publishing company Shinko Music. While I was in the office, you know, the token uh, gaijin, which means foreigner, the president who I had met at one of the dinners, 
with Kiss. He came over to me like, oh, Elisa, how are you? How are you? I'm like, I'm fine. I'm, you know, talking to Reiko, the editor in chief. And one thing led to another. They invited me out to lunch. And he offered me a job. Wow, that's great. He, you know, he said, well, I, I I want, I want, and he used this word. I'll never forget this. He used the word mascot. He said, I need a mascot. I'm like, what? I, I don't wear costumes. <laughs> right. I'm not going to jump up and down like a, a bunny rabbit. <laughs> or, or, or I don't know what, a clown. Right. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? Basically, he needed a front man, woman. He wanted someone with a finger on the pulse of the whole music scene to bring him the latest and the greatest in all music because they were a music publishing company. He wanted to purchase the catalog. Back in the day, music publishers promoted the catalog. They were the ones who got the record companies interested to create a deal and sign a deal, sign the label, sign the artist to the label, and then get a promoter to promote the band live. So the publisher was an integral part of this process. And I, I was just brimming with ideas. And I said, yes, I want to introduce punk rock to the Japanese market. That's my, that was my new thing. Um, so I want to introduce punk rock and we, we need to do concerts and uh, events or what is called experiential now. And that's what happened. And I worked for him for a year. I had a contract. I went back home to New York, sold my things, packed them up, sent two or three boxes off to Tokyo, Japan. And in the summer of 1977, I moved to Tokyo. Didn't speak the language. That's immersive for sure. Happy birthday. I was 20. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. You don't hear people doing that that much anymore. That's for sure. <laughs> well, not that age. Not, <laughs> not that, that age. That age. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, and under my skin, you have a chapter that I was hoping you could talk about the night with the Yakuza. The Yakuza. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't want to give any spoiler alerts except to say this. So I went off on a, I gallivanted through Kyoto with my writer friend, my buddy on the tour. And we happened to go into this building. Now all the buildings in Japan at night have neon in the downtown areas. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's 2000 times Times Square. And this building, well, I don't know, we walked in. The whole building was pink on the interior, which was odd. We get into the elevator that fit like half a person. And the two of us are facing one another like sardines. And we look at the buttons, the elevator buttons, and that it had G for ground floor. And then it had B, B1, B2, B3. And I'm thinking, are we in a health? Like, is this a spa? Are these vitamins? What, what is this? What is a B1 floor? Oh, duh, basement. Right. So you go down, and now it's a nightclub, and it has that plush, again, pink, plush couch. Like, it looks like um, couches upholstery on the door and I push the door in and uh, now I'm in a nightclub with my buddy and the rest I'm not saying because you have to read yeah, the book yeah the underground but, nightclub <laughs> but it say it was run by the Yakuza who are the mafia and we got into trouble <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes. Now, uh, are you still in contact with any of the team from KISS? I'm in contact with a couple of people, yeah. Oh, and nice. actually, you know, it's really interesting because while I'm in Vegas, I mean, Avant Pop is 
is my first stop. But my second stop is the Kiss Monster Mini Golf yeah. at the Rio. <laughs> oh, yeah. Heck, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, the owner of that, she's done this. She also does the Twilight Zone Mini Golf. And uh, and then she has a book as well. So it's you'll have to introduce yourself and make sure you get to meet the owner. I know. There. I yeah. know. She, has, she, she actually has two books. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. Um, we're super excited to be having you here. Uh, you know, we're a tiny bookshop, but we got lots of character and people. People, we gotta. Uh, the community comes out for us, so we're really excited yeah. to, to bring you here, and we're looking forward to uh, having you. Hopefully, you can do a little reading uh, from yeah. your book, because yeah, we, I'd love to hear <laughs> your stories. Are fantastic. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So, yes. Okay, I'd like you to choose which chapter. Okay, let me know, you and that's it. the one I'll read. Fantastic. Absolutely. Well, Elise, thank you so much. Um, it's been great talking with you. And thanks for coming on Avant Pop Bookstore Presents. And uh, we'll be having you here uh, in this next week. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> All right. See you uh, on thanks Saturday. so much. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Have a good okay. one. Bye. Bye. I want to thank Elise for joining us. You can find her book, Under My Skin, at the Avon Pop Bookstore in Las Vegas. You can also find it at EliseCrinsell.com. The theme music for Avon Pop Bookstore Presents is performed by artist Dilla Shu. And I hope you can join us again for another edition of Avon Pop Bookstore Presents. Mm -hmm.